Hey, welcome to another Bible study here at Influence Church, and we've been studying the book of Genesis. If you missed any of our previous studies, what you can do is you can go to our YouTube channel, you can click the videos tab, and there you can rewatch any of our previous studies. Last week, we covered the mark of Cain, and that was a really interesting story, um, examining the first murder, and then as well the mark of Cain, breaking it down and seeing where there have been some wrong theories concerning matter and what actually biblically um, we see clearly written in scripture. Today we are continuing in the book of Genesis, and we're going to Genesis, Genesis chapter 5. So we've already finished four chapters and we're moving into chapter 5. I know it feels like we've been in the book of Genesis for a, a good amount of time already, but every chapter has so much in it that it takes us a little bit of time. I believe we've finished six sessions already, so this is going to be our seventh session in the book of Genesis. So I want you to grab your Bible so that you can follow along in Genesis chapter 5, and I want you to grab a notepad so you can take some notes. If you have not done it as yet, click that share button it's on no it's on the bottom of this side of the screen and um hit that subscribe button as well so let's get into our study for this evening and the title of our study is the bible and incest not insects right incest so fair um parental guidance warning um parental guidance parental warning I, i'm I, i'm not sure how that statements go but um, fair warning for the topic that we'll be discussing uh in this session today for parental guidance all right so the bible and incest so this has been something that has been a cause for question um it may be even something that atheists use for showing that the or, or claiming that the bible um lacks consistency or that god seems to be confused because what we do see is in biblical times incest was permitted and then at a certain point it was no longer permitted and it was forbidden so did God change his mind why is it that incest was forbidden and why was it even allowed in the first place so let's get into it today and our text that we're going to be studying from our opening passage is Genesis chapter 5 verse 3 to 8 okay so turn with me there follow along Genesis chapter 5 verse 3 to 8 and it says and Adam lived 100 and 30 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. Now, this was not his first son because in our last study, we know that Adam had two sons, um, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. So this is after Cain and Abel. The Bible is speaking at 130 years. He then had this son named Seth. And after he begot Seth, the days of Adam's was 800 and. 800 years, right? 800 years. So we know that Adam would have lived a total of 930 years because uh, when he had set, he was 130 years. And then after that, the Bible says his years were 800 years. So Adam lived a total of 930 years. So if he lived 930 years, right? You could just imagine how many children he had over those years. Let's just say he had one child per year, excluding, let's say, the first hundred years right um so you're looking at roughly around 800 children that adam would have had in his lifespan of course you you might be thinking what about old age and all these things but adam was much more genetically stronger than we are today and i did cover that in one of our previous studies speaking about the original man what he was created like compared to how we are now due to um the sin condition and due to time over time our genetics um Decon our genetics getting weaker and weaker over time and in terms of the strength of adam in terms of his physical well-being he was a strong man well into that entire age gap so he would not have been like okay 800 years as an old man he can't do anything um no he would have been a strong man right because his genetics was a lot better because he was made to be perfect and he was made to live forever unfortunately due to the fall of man sin and death entered into the world so it says that Adam would have lived 800 years and he had sons and daughters. Now, the Bible does not tell us how many sons and daughters Adam had through, during those 800 years, but we just estimated maybe 800 sons and daughters over those years. That's quite a lot, right? Um, and that means the age gap between them would have been a lot different as well. Imagine your oldest son is like 500 years older than your youngest son. That's a huge age gap. And then it says, so all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. I don't know why we were doing the maths. The Bible actually gives us the total right there. My bad, right? And then he died. Seth lived 105 years and he begot Enosh. 
After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 870 years, and he had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years, and then he died. Now, you might be asking, well, what does this passage have to do with incest? It's quite clear from this passage that all the children and grandchildren and those that would have been booted during this time period with Adam and Eve, they would have been direct relatives. They would have either been brothers and sisters or cousins, etc. Now, as you can see, there's a long lifespan of Adam, a lot of children, right? Um, 800, you're talking about roughly, we're just estimating. Then Seth lives, a, lives almost eight, more than 900 years as well. And he has a whole set of children. So you're talking about a, a huge community already formed just in the first um, roughly 2,000 years of the earth's existence, right? Just among this first family. But for there to be, um, for there to be fruitfulness or reproduction, there had to be incest occurring when we speak about the origination of humankind. Now, you might be thinking, well, um, that, that, that for you right now, that might be something that, that you can't get your mind past because of your cultural background. But even in our world right now, there are certain cultures where incest is prom promoted um, because of their wanting to be um, uh, uh, keeping, they're wanting to keep the bloodline of certain families intact, so to speak. So, so in terms of kingship or um, royalhood, royalty in some cultures, they would keep the um, the offsprings within that family so that there isn't any other bloodline that comes into the family, right? And and that is currently in our world. And if, and you may be living in, in a part of the world like myself where incest is actually frowned upon, even to the extent where it can be against the law of where you live. But biblically, in the beginning, it was permitted. Now, even if we look at Adam and Eve, we spoke about um, the Bible and sexism in one of our studies. And when we look up on that study of Adam and Eve, we saw that Eve was pulled out of Adam. So God created Adam or mankind as one, and then he pulled uh, Eve out of Adam. So there was a splitting of the cells. And we did speak a little bit about when a child is born that they take 23 chromosomes from their mother, 23 from their father, and that makes up their 46 chromosomes in their DNA chain, which determines their physical features and even in terms of their their internal features, right? The, how their, their body functions. So in this case, we could even suggest, now I'm not saying this based on any biblical evidence um we can't say that the science may point it as well but we could even we could even suggest that when it comes to adam and eve in terms of their genetic makeup in terms of their similarity in their dna or their um chromosomes adam and eve would have been more alike in terms of like siblings when it comes to their um, their chromosomes, that similarity in maybe their physical features, that similarity in um, in in how their body operate, their, their genetic code. They would have been much more similar when it comes to how we would see right now brothers and sisters, that similarity, as compared to people that are very, very far distant relatives, right? Because when you are when, when you continue to reproduce, there continues to be mutations, and those mutations lead to a lot of differences in how you look, in how your body operates. So over years and years, so most likely, Adam and Eve, they would have had a completely different um, genetic makeup and look as compared to the sons and daughters of Enosh, because Enosh is like almost 2,000 years ago, years after, right? Because every time they, a new child is born, their genetic code will be slightly different because no two human beings are exactly alike unless you're identical twins, right? So they would, their genetic makeup will keep changing, keep mutating, and they would be completely different in how they look and even in that sense of their, them having that similar gene code, right? So I know that's a lot of bio, but I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it as simple as possible. And I could even be wrong when it comes to the biology because that's not my field of expertise, right? But I'm trying to just share that information as best as I could have comprehended it as well. Which brings us to this topic of the mitochondria DNA, right? So because bi biblically, we say clearly that, okay, all of humanity came from Adam and Eve, right? All of humanity came from Adam and Eve. Um, from their offspring, the entire world was populated. And some people, they find that very hard to wrap their mind about around that the entire world could have come from Adam and Eve. But you're talking about many thousands of years and reproduction over those years and populations over those years. But scientifically as well, there is something known as the mitochondrial DNA or um, the mitochondrial um, 
the it's it's a cell in the body that actually carries the 47th chromosome so usually we have 46 chromosomes which tell how we look and how our body is made up and how it functions but there's a 47th chromosome that is found in the mitochondrial dna right and i just gave a little definition here the mitochondrial dna is a small circular chromosome found inside the mitochondria the mitochondria are organelles found in cells that are the sites of energy production. The mitochondria and thus the mitochondrial DNA are passed from, and this is the important thing here, this is what I just gonna, this is why I mentioned it, they are passed from mother to offspring. So this DNA is exactly passed from the mother to the child and this, this specific DNA is not tainted in any way. Based on the mitochondrial DNA, scientists have actually been able to trace that most or oh, sorry i shouldn't say most but all of humanity all of all of humankind that currently exists on the earth based on this mitochondrial dna and it being transferred from directly from the mother to the child they have been able to trace and say that there is one singular person and they call this person the mitochondrial eve that all of the existing humanity that live on the earth currently they came from this person and here's the funny thing right based on their tracking um tracing the dna tracing the, and the science and the maths behind it they've actually suggested that this mitochondrial eve this woman that all of humanity came from guess where she lived in Africa. She originally ori um, came from Africa. And then when you study geography and you study where the Garden of Eden was located, you will see that the Garden of Eden would have been located very close or even in that continent of Africa. But right now, based on geography, it is covered in water most likely due to the great flood in noah's days there was a lot of change in the world geography at that point in time right so mitochondrial eve there's actually scientific proof that all of us we're all related we've all come from this one woman right so what does this now have to do with incest right coming back to it now when was incest forbidden biblically so incest was biblically forgive um forbidden right under the mosaic law so when moses was given the law from god that is where god said to the children of israel they should not um indulge in in um in relations with close family members and we're actually going to read it so leviticus chapter 18 verse 9 and 11 it says the nakedness of your sister the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother whether born at home or elsewhere their nakedness shall not be uncovered the nakedness of your father's wife daughter begotten by your father she is your sister you shall not uncover her nakedness. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 9 and verse 11. Right? So here we see that under the Mosaic law, based on these moral standards, the incest is forbidden. Actually, there's a very popular um, couple in the Old Testament that you may not even know or, or, or you probably didn't read about it and realize that this couple are actually brother and sister. And this is Abraham and Sarah. Right? Sarah was actually the half-sister of Abraham um they had the same father but different mothers right and that's where we see in leviticus chapter 18 and verse 11 uh, where it says the nakedness of your father's wife daughter begotten by your father she is your sister you shall not uncover her nakedness now um the the on for abraham and sarah they were not under the mosaic laws yet because moses came after abraham and sarah but it's at this point the mosaic law was given and it forbid incest so what is it now that God is thinking? Is it that God was confused? Is it that he initially allowed it and then he changed his mind? Why is it now under the Mosaic law and currently where we in, in our time that we live in, why is it forbidden biblically? And I want to just break this down into three reasons why the why incest is forbidden, right? And these three reasons, firstly, is for physical reasons, secondly, is for moral reasons, and thirdly, is for psychological reasons. So the first reason is for physical reasons. So even um, the science supports this, that there is genetic diseases and genetic disorders that are passed down from our DNA. Now, when two persons that have very similar genetic uh, makeup when they reproduce there's a higher chance of their offspring having this genetic disease or disorder therefore um, scientifically it's not advised to have close relations between family members because of the higher chance of that child being born with a um, birth disease or disorder right and this is not a curse in any way but this is actually the science behind it is that we have we all have um mutations in our body we all have different parts of our bodies that aren't functioning um 
to optimum standard, which we most likely um, inherited from our parents. And then if two persons that came from the same exact um, parents were to reproduce, then the higher the chances of that, that disease being passed on to the child. So even though you may not have it because you, your, your gene code, you didn't get it from your parents, or so it's inactive in your body by you reproducing with someone with a similar background, the chances are higher, right? So instead of it being 50% from you and then 0% from somebody else, when it's with this person from the same um, um, from the same parents, then you're talking about 50% from you, 50% from them, higher chances of the child getting it, right? So genetic disease and disorder, that's the main reason. And biblically, God as well knew that this was a reason for um, forbidding incest. Now, when Adam and Eve was created, and this is what I kind of touched on at the beginning of our study, and I did touch on it in our previous study, their genetic makeup was much stronger than ours. Over time, and this is scientifically proven as well, over time, um, as we keep reproducing, and due to the sin condition, um, due to diseases and death that was introduced by sin into the world, into our bodies, our genetic makeup in other words, it kind of gets watered down over time. It gets weaker over time. So Adam and Eve and his children and his children, children in, in, that we just read about in those first 2,000 years, their genetic makeup would have been much stronger. By the time we reach to Moses now, um, roughly about 4,000 years later, after Noah had uh, and the great flood, now we reach to Moses, there, is the, there was this same problem of genetic disease and disorder where the genetic code had been watered down and it was a lot weaker so reproduction with those that are close relatives would have caused physical problems for the child that was to be born and this is why God forbids incest in the family right so for physical reasons number one number two is for moral reasons now when we read into leviticus chapter 18 verse 7 to 8 and then verse 10 god goes even further not just to talk about incest between um in terms of between family members as in cousins or closer relatives as in brothers and sisters but there is a moral aspect to it as well because when israel came out of egypt they came out of a pagan culture a sinful culture that indulged in a whole lot of evil and wickedness when it came to when it came to sexual immorality and actually you're going to see it here when we read from leviticus 18 verse 17 and verse 10 the extremities to which the pagans took um, incest, right? So they took incest to a whole next level when it comes to the evilness of their heart, right? So let's read it. It says the nakedness, this is what God had to forbid them from because the culture that they came out of Egypt, this is what Egypt um, practiced, right? So God had to forbid them from it so that they don't carry on with these same moral values that were um, harmful and destructive in its um, origin and was definitely evil and sinful, right? So God said the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother you shall not uncover. So you guys are catching that, right? Right? nakedness of your father nakedness of your mother so he actually had to say hey these are this is immoral the pagans they've done this they they have had relations with their parents that is immoral you cannot be doing that right she is your mother you shall not uncover her nakedness the nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover it because it is your father's nakedness so you are you are also by being with your father's wife, even though that is not your biological mother, you are also exposing your father. That is, it is immoral what you're doing to your father. You're, de you're destroying that relationship between you and your, your father. And you're going to, you're crossing a line that you can't come back from, right? So the nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, their nakedness you shall not uncover. For theirs is your own nakedness. So you can't be with your own children, right? That is your own offspring. So there's a whole moral aspect behind it where God had to say to the children of Israel, you can't continue to, to, to do these things that you've seen in Egypt because it's certainly evil in its orientation. And the moral aspect of it is something that this, and, and this is part of the moral law, right? Um, where we're reading from in Leviticus chapter 18, it's understood as a moral law where God was given morals that the nation of Israel Israel should follow so that they can be set apart, so that they can truly be in the image and likeness of God. So there's the moral aspect. And the last one is the psychological aspect. Can you imagine the destruction that this type of immorality in terms of incest between father and, and child and chi um, child and parent and, um, and step parents and child, the kind of 
psychological destruction that this would have caused to the family. See, God instituted the family. God created the family in the Garden of Eden. He created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and he created the family. And the family is ought to be the building block of our society. By this immorality um, entering into the family life in terms of father with children, you're talking about pedophilia. You're even speaking about the extent you are talking about rape. It, this entering into the family, and we do have an uh, uh, example of that in biblical context where David's son um, did rape his half-sister. So in the family construct, you're talking about something that psychologically is destroying the home, is destroying children, is destroying the bedrock of, of our society. And the psychological effect is that it, it would have ripped apart not just families, but the entire society. You're talking about, um, you're talking about hatred, envy, um, fighting, murder, all of this would have result, it resulted from um, incest and this immorality of incest occurring in the family life. And we do have biblical examples of that as well. The same example of, um, of David's son um, raping his half-sister actually led to one of his other, his brothers murdering him. One of David's son murdered his other son because of this, right? So there's a lot of psychological effects. There's, it destroys the family and God created the family life to be that sustainable bedrock of society so that our society can continue to move forward. And even in our current society, we see that these types of relations, it destroys the family. If a, if a mother is or a stepmother is having relations with a stepson that destroys the entire family that breaks the family apart that that, that causes unforgiveness and things that that is very difficult to heal from and i do believe that god can bring healing to those relationships because nothing is impossible for god to restore but this is the reason that god had to say hey Incest, it must be forbidden because there's a physical aspect in which it damages um, the, the children. Now that sin has entered into the world, because of sin enter, and sin and death entering into the world, because of Adam's and Eve decision and their genetic code being tainted by sin or tainted by disease, um, lifestyle diseases, and that being passed on from their children to children to children, over time that becomes worse and worse, there must be a stop to incest. But then, like I said, the moral aspect, the pagan culture took it way to our next extent of evilness and sin that, that never occurred in Adam's time with Adam and Eve and his children. And he had to stop it. God had to put a stop and tell the, the children of Israel, you shall not continue in this immorality. And thirdly, the psychological effect, the damages it left in families and the minds of children and, um, and then in the home altogether. This is the three main reasons why incest was forbidden, right? So... We spoke a lot there. Um, we spoke. A, we talk a lot about a, a lot of biology, um, but we covered a lot of biblical grounds in terms of incest. And the reason that we covered this study today is so that when someone approaches you um, with this criticism, or they try to approach you to um, to attack your faith based on this argument of incest, you can have the knowledge and understanding of why in the beginning, yes, incest was allowed due to with Adam and Eve and their children, um, and then why in the under the Mosaic law it was forbidden by God, and we just discussed all those reasons. Now that you understand this, you can better um, defend your faith and as well not be shaken in your faith when people who have ill intentions come up against you to try to prove in some way that that God is imperfect, that God is flawed, or that God um, is double-minded or double-standard. Um, I've given you enough information today to be able to rebut that argument. If you do have any questions, any criticism, any concerns, you can leave it in the comments or you can contact me directly. If you have not done it as yet, click that share button, click that subscribe button. This brings us to the end of our study today. We continue in the book of Genesis, so continue reading along with me, and I'll see you in our next session. God bless you.